It is an acknowledged fact that during the Mughal rule was marked by abundance of wheat, barley, gram and other food grains with the prices of all articles of food and other daily necessaries of life being so low that then a copper coin equivalent to 140th of rupee sufficed for the expenses of one soldier and his horse for a few days. It was reported that almost all the cities both in the north and the south were stocked with the necessaries of life. At least five cities, Wiz, Agra, Fatehpur, Sikri, Delhi, Lahore, and Ahmedabad were extraordinarily prosperous and had a population of two lakhs or more each. Many foreign visitors acknowledged the great wealth and prosperity of Agra and Fatehpur Sikri and that all the necessaries and convenience of human life can be obtained in Agra, if desired. This is even true of the articles that have to be imported from this tanked corner of the world. Mughals valued manufacturing ability and Akbar was particularly keen on developing the technical expertise and greatly encouraged artisans, iron workers and goldsmiths. In the empire gems and pearls abound in large number gold and silver were plentiful as were horses from Persia and Tartary. The Mughal capital Agra was flush with vast quantity of every type of commodity. It was reported that there was no death of food supplies and same was the case in Delhi. The public buildings were remarkable and were well built, lofty and handsomely decorated residences. The cities were full of parks, gardens, and filled with a rich profusion of fruits and flowers. The Mughal throne was peripatetic, enabling the rulers to keep in touch with all areas of their domains, thereby spreading welfare to the length of the countries. Foreign travelers were particularly appreciative of the city of Lahore and were of the view that this city was next to none, either in Asia or in Europe with regard to size population and wealth. It was reported that the city was crowded with merchants and its bazaars were full of every kind of merchandise. They mentioned that there was no art or craft useful to human life which was not practiced. The foreign visitors were greatly impressed by the cheapness of grain in Akbar's camp in his journey to Lahore and were surprised to see all kind of food grains and other eatables, cotton cloth, and other necessaries of life in plenty. These travelers also talk about famines, but they were mostly localized and do not involve the whole country. It is now well recognized that in the country during the Mughal times there was no death of food grains and other necessaries of life. The Mughal rule was synonymous with wealth and luxury that also trickled down to all segments of population. The middle class consisting of zamindars, merchants and the lower rank of the official staff and other employees of the same category were fairly well to do. The masses and the inferior artisans were also rated to be living in a certain level of prosperity although they were not considered wealthy. They felt good secure and did not have to face economic misery that was thought to be the hallmark of the age. The level economic prosperity enjoyed by the people during the Mughal rule is revealed in the salaries paid to various strata of the employees as well as the prices of food grains and other commodities mentioned in many historical manuscripts. The daily wages of ordinary laborers were two or three dams per day, and payment made to slaves was one dam per day. The builder or ordinary laborer got two dams a day, a bamboo cutter two was paid two dams daily, a dasher was paid three dams a day, a water carrier three dams, a water carrier of inferior capacity two dams, a varnisher of reeds two dams a day, a bricklayer of first class three dams and of second class three dams. In Jangir's time, the mostly wages of servants were two to three rupees. The wages paid by the Dutch factory at Agra in 1636 were three rupees per month for servants, porters and sales horsemen and rupees 5 for the sweepers and the watermen. In South India, at the Masali Patam factory, servants received 2 rupee monthly in 1602 and at Bombay, the daily wages of laborers in 1674 were 3 dams.
The daily wages of a skilled laborer and workers in Akbar's time ranged from 6 to 7 dams with mason of the first class. For example, was paid 7 dams a day. Of second class, 6 dams and one of third class, 5 dams. A carpenter of the first class got 7 dams. Of second class, 6 dams. Of third class, 4 dams. Of fourth class, 3 dams. And of fifth class, 3 dams daily. During the reign of Jangir, there was hardly any increase in the wages as the prevailing. Wages were considered appropriate, enabling a reasonable lifestyle to be maintained. The average prices of principal food grain towards the end of Akbar's reign calculated on the basis of 82.3 LBS equivalent to one month instead of that of 55 LBS a month, which was the weight in Akbar's time, were as follows. Wheat sold at 133.3 seeds a rupee, barely 200 seeds, rice 54.2 seeds, gram 135.6 seeds, bajra 182.8 seeds, and jar 108.5 seeds. The prices of ordinary cloth of different varieties were recorded as chint 2 dams per yard, razina that is ghazi 1 dam per piece, dubatta 1 dam per piece, and Silahati 2 to 4 dams per yard. Taking into consideration the prices of things, at the end of the 16th century, the wages paid to all kind of workers and laborers were adequate to maintain them. It is observed by many economic historians that the financial well-being of the ruling classes apply trickle down and it is reported that along with case salaries, food and clothes were provided free of charge to the working class, saving them plenty of money. It is also noted that during the Mughal age, people's wants were few and the standard of living of the common people was very low. They lived in mud houses attached with straw. They had very few utensils and clothes, and their furniture consists of bad streets. This was considered a normal way of life and was practiced for centuries. Many venues of soliciting financial assistance were available to the common man, particularly through the largest of the upper classes. Mughals had undertaken to arrange for weddings of the common people and many royal ladies were famous for doing that. The Mughal administration was keenly aware of the economic difficulties of the masses and was motivated to come to their help. It is the recorded verdict of history that the Mughal times were exceptional for their prosperity and that was the reason that Mughal legitimacy reigned supreme long after actual power slipped from the country. If you really love the video then like, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel.